Parents in Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. All right, everybody, we're going to take you out full right now to Sky Harbor. You see Air Force Two there in the distance about to make to land right there as Vice President Mike Pence will be speaking in Phoenix a little bit later this afternoon. We'll get you some of the highlights there on Fox10Phoenix.com as well. But there you go as uh, the Air Force Two just has touched down right here in Phoenix. So this is the what the vice president is going to be doing today. Uh, he will be delivering remarks at the National Association of Manuf Manufacturers Spring 2019 Board of Directors meeting. Then the vice president will participate in a roundtable with small business administrator Linda McMahon and the National Association of Manufacturers Executive Council. Following the vice president will receive a briefing and a tour of a drug enforcement administration facility there. So there you go. Air Force Two now on the ground as Vice President Mike Pence once again back in Phoenix. And folks, we'll be back. More news now coming up next. And welcome back everyone here to News Now. You see Air Force Two has arrived in Phoenix there at Sky Harbor. Mike Pence, Vice President Mike Pence will be talking a little bit later. And right now we have our very own Troy Hayden. Hey. And doing, uh, he's gonna give us a little uh, insight because uh, uh, last time the Vice President was here, uh, you had a cool opportunity. Yeah, I was allowed to be embedded in the motorcade yeah. and I was with the Vice President uh, throughout most of his, actually all, all of his visit, uh, really. And it was, it was quite an experience. Uh, the governor's office invited me. I, I had some different contacts there, but yeah, we were sitting right there uh, basically as the plane came in last time, just like this. And then we got into uh, the motorcade and we were by three or four cars, I think, behind the vice president. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, you want to talk about jetting through town <laughs> when you don't stop for a stop sign or yeah. an intersection or a freeway. And I remember it was really weird as we came around because we left uh, Sky Harbor and we headed off to the west uh, out of there. And then we jumped up on the 10. Okay. There was no, there were no, there was traffic on the other side of the freeway. Yes. But there was no traffic around us wow. on the 10. Wow. So it was really weird having like a deserted freeway. Yeah, right. When you're driving, you know, with the vice president and then. And uh, we went up to a Mexican restaurant in the center part of town. And at that time, they were talking about the Trump tax cuts. Oh, okay, yes. And uh, it was interesting, you know, to be able to watch him operate up close. Uh, he's a real talker. I mean, there, he's got a gift. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain politicians you see that aren't the most comfortable in bigger situations. But uh, watching him closely, having him walk in, the way he commanded the room, and the way that he talked individually, 
to East, there were like there were business owners, there were just normal uh, people there with their kids and things. And so he went from table to table with Governor Ducey. They would just get up, they'd go to one table and sit down. And the conversation was fairly effortless, mm -hmm. you know, and him talking about how the tax cuts would impact them and, and selling it. And then they went up and they did a uh, unscheduled stop uh, and he gave blood. So something had just happened, I forgot it was. Oh. There was something that had happened. Okay. And so it was kind of symbolic of him yeah, giving sure, blood sure. at a, a Valley Blood Bank where he went in there. And, um, you know, we were told not to ask questions, but I did anyway because <laughs> I'm one of those journalists. <laughs> yeah. But it was anything like hardcore. I just asked him if he'd ever uh, given blood before. And, and he said, yeah, oh, yeah, many times I give him blood. And he seemed like a nice enough guy. So uh, that was my experience. It was it was uh, a good day. And it looks like we're going to have a very similar visit today. Yeah, it looks like that. And it, Troy, it seems like everything is just so orchestrated down to the minute almost, right, on these trips? where yeah. just, you know, very calculated. Yeah, or, you know, they'll do a quote-unquote surprise like they did with the blood bank, mm -hmm. you know. But even that, it was funny when, because um, we, we, we had a heads up on it, and we went on a different um, route than where the vice president was, and we left early. I remember thinking, well, that's odd, from Mexican restaurant. Yeah. And we arrived at this blood bank. And when we walked in, everybody was kind of stunned. Like, oh, yeah. are you the person they were talking about? They, oh, they said they had a VIP coming in. Okay. Like, no, it's not me. <laughs> yeah. So they were kind of kept in the dark. Yeah. You know, that whole blood bank, everything, until the very last minute. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, everything kind of clears out, and, the, and he goes in. So yeah, that was kind of, that wasn't as orchestrated. Is that the Governor Ducey? Yeah, let's go yeah. bring that out folder. There you go. You got the governor meeting uh, the vice president there. The and time. they've been friends for a long time, you know. Um, the, the Governor's Association, they, they do a lot of different events together. So they know each other. I think there's a lot of mutual respect between the two men. And uh, there was definitely a friendship, you know, mm -hmm. that I saw between the two of them, uh, that they liked each other, you know. And, and I think they have a lot of the same core beliefs, you know, especially when it comes to business and the economy and, and things like that. I, I think, you know, really the governor's strongest suits, uh, if you ask me. And, you know, he, that's what he campaigned on, uh, mostly, especially his first campaign. But it was just, you know, we're going to grow our economy. Absolutely. I mean, and look at what we're doing. Right. And know. just coming down, it looks like uh, just moments away, the vice president will be making his way down those steps there to see the governor, Doug Ducey. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit later, he'll be at the Phoenician uh, making a speech there. Or Danielle Miller is uh, handling that story. And she'll have uh, his remarks there. And we'll have it for you on Fox10Phoenix.com. And then she'll have her uh, report later today on at 5 o'clock on Fox 10. Yeah, Danielle's a good reporter. I thought that for a second that was vice president, but it's not. You know, it's interesting with, with Air Force One, generally when the door opens up, the president's the first one through yes, the door. Yes, yes. <laughs> you know, so things are done a little bit different here. And, and who knows? He may be on the phone with somebody or doing some sort of business and and uh, come down. But, yeah, I, I, is, do you know if there's any other member of the delegation who's traveling with him or anything like that uh, from Linda, Arizona? Uh, yeah, uh, Linda McMahon, the small business the uh, cabinet yeah. member. Uh, she'll be here. And... Uh, yeah, it's always interesting to see just when are, when did they want to pop them down then. Yeah, so that yeah, obviously the guys who talk into their sleeves. <laughs> yes. I learned pretty early on in my journalism career. You don't want to joke with them. They don't like yeah. to, they don't like joking. <laughs> no, no, no. They're very serious. Give them a nod. Yeah, they got a big job to do. And then uh, generally the, the traveling press will come out the back. Oh, is that the governor going up there? Oh wow. Yeah, so the governor's probably being brought up. They're probably going to have some sort of a short meeting or maybe a photo op in there. Or, uh, uh, I'm not sure why he'd want to see the, the governor inside, but. Yeah, like I said, you know, who knows with those two, yeah, they probably have a lot of different things to talk about as opposed to just official business. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. And then they'll be uh, whisked away. And, and, and talk about just how big the motorcade, too, is, because once the vice president gets in uh, one of those SUVs, I mean, then there's like 13 or 14 that yeah. they'll follow. Not quite as big as when the president goes, but I, I think we had a, a good, yeah, probably 10, mm. I would say, and we were about three or four back. Uh, and you've got, you know, the, uh, the SUVs, and of course, they always have two. You know, just so there's a decoy, decoy, especially with the president, too. They call the beast. You know, they got two different beasts that, that are there. And then there's another one that I've always heard. You know, they, they say it's classified, but I've heard it's heavily fortified with weaponry and that it also has a whole bunch of different, like, blocking-type systems. Like, it'll block out cell phones oh, and different sure. signals. Yes. Uh, so you can't have an IED or something yeah. like that go off uh, mm -hmm. around uh, the president or vice president. So, yeah, the, the Secret Service has gotten very good at this. Um, you know, the, the last time we lost a president, of course, was a long time ago, mm -hmm. but that, that doesn't uh, erase from their memories. No. They want to make sure it never happens again. No, and that's why we'll never see a president or vice president in a convertible again. Yeah. No, mm -hmm. and, 
you know, it's, it's, it's amazing too when you look up, and, and like I said, it, it's, it's a, everything's a little bit smaller with the vice president than it is with the president, but right now on this terminal, if you turn around and look back towards where our cameras are, uh, look, you know, behind the camera, there are sharpshooters all over the room. Right. Wow. So they're watching the tarmac, they're watching the area behind it, you know, then yeah. you've got, uh, you know, dozens of police officers, and then you've got the motorcycle, the motor officers sure. who are in front. Yes. That block all the exits, that block all the intersections, mm -hmm. you know, so that when you're driving, there's, there's nobody in your way. And, uh, yeah, you know. What well, the great thing about the, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, just seeing this site right here just really commands a presence and respect of uh, the United States. Right. I mean, think about how cool this is when this plane goes to other countries and it just shows off just how great our country is. Yeah, and, and the power, power. yeah, power, power and, and wealthy. I mean, let's be honest, mm -hmm. you know, we're a very wealthy country, even though you're not quite where we used to be standing wise in the world. Other countries are catching up a bit, but you know, uh, we still distance ourselves quite a bit. And uh, yeah, you're right, it's a symbol of the office. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you're just joining us, everyone, the governor, Doug Ducey, went up the steps and is speaking now with the vice president inside Air Force Two. And yeah, like Troy said, maybe doing a photo op there too. Or maybe just want to get some snacks before they got to head on the road. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe it is. Yeah. Maybe he's got to finish a sandwich or yeah. something. You know. And, uh, you know. It is uh, just before noon here. Yeah. No. I, I. You know. Who knows what they're doing? Maybe they're being briefed. Is that him coming out? Oh. Okay. Oh. It's, they probably. You know. Want to be seen coming out together. That's probably what we're looking. Yes. at. Yes. That's why he went up the back of the plane right there. Mm -hmm. You know. And this is just me talking, but um, and nobody's ever said anything to me about this. Okay. But I've been around the governor quite a bit. I, I really feel like. If we end up with Mike Pence in office at some point, mm -hmm. I think you'd see Doug Ducey. A, a big cabinet member? Yeah, I, I would okay. think so. Yeah, I, I just up. do. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying that that's what th this is all about or, you know, but it, just the relationship between the two and the way that I think the governor has positioned himself um, over the past, what, five years now. Mm -hmm. I think uh, he, he wants a little, he wants something oh. after this. Sure. He's getting a gift right here, too, now. You know, it's like some sort of an Indian type jewelry, yeah. or Native American type jewelry. That's nice. Turquoise of some sort. There you go. And then there, our photographer Rick Davis there showing us uh, the zoomed in shot there. Great job by Rick. Showing us that great shot as well. And then, yeah, like you said, uh, Troy, it's just, it's just so choreographed the way they make their movements then. You see the Secret Service there just <laughs> doing a lap, oh, yeah. doing a quick lap. So, you know, it depends on who's there, uh, whether they'll go over and greet the crowd now or they'll do it when they leave, but then you'll get a whole group of people. There we go. There we go. So there's a whole group of people who have been brought out to say hello to the, the vice president, and they're, they're usually kept behind a little cordoned off area. Now, what and type so, of VIPs are these, Troy, that get to have this sort yeah, of access? Well, it depends. You know, oh, look at this. Even the back. Now, that's a shot right there. Oh, yeah. They, the, they constantly yeah. keep... Because now, you know, the Secret Service is making sure nobody can come from that other side, and they always keep that car close. Mm -hmm. um, that's their getaway car. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's Rick Davis there showing us uh, the shot right there. Yeah. A little uh, <laughs> behind the scenes there as the Vice President Mike Pence making his way here to Phoenix there. Well, thanks so much, Troy. You got it. Good seeing you. Yeah, nice see you, buddy. little insight. Yeah, enjoy the rest of the uh, trip here. Absolutely. And uh, we will continue to show this to you right here on News Now, everybody. Thanks again to Troy Hayden for giving us some insight of the vice president's movements from the last time he was there and was able to spend some time in the motorcade there. So you see the vice president now talking to some fans and supporters, not only of the vice president, but also President Donald Trump as well. We'll be back. More News Now coming up.